outside. What I got to do is, uh, like I said, there's about a 200,000 height rise right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a trench. Now that trench that I just made, I got to do that on every single one of them, but the purpose for that is to level this because that's blocking airflow. We won't, we don't want, in other words, the whole point of this is that we don't, from the time that valve lifts off, we don't want anything in the way blocking airflow. Now, this is a high lift airflow side here. All right, now I'm fixing to switch cutters and go to a different shape egg for this and this. All right, so let's switch carbides to some other shape that we need. One of the things we do is we check the spark plug now because we're getting into that area and I can't tell you how many times that I get these things that right here's somewhat of an example. It's like they didn't chase the threads properly or clean them or something and uh, I mean they won't go in finger at all uh, so you have to take and what I usually do is I got a spark plug thread cleaner and um, I'll go in there and clean all the threads all right she don't feel bad enough for that I will go through each and every one of these this is a three-quarter inch reach spark plug this is oh lord here we go verify this I'm gonna to have to get back in just a second I got two other spark plugs that I use it looks like we might be running into that bullshit issue with these fucking spark plugs excuse my language okay I'm gonna let you see this from a bird's eye view I went in there and took the washer off the spark plug so what I done I'm hoping you can see this I come up with 747 right at it but if we take it to absolutely you know that's really it. That's three quarters plug. You know, we're talking three thousandths. So hopefully you can see this. There's a reason I want you to see what I'm fixing to show you. Trying to look through the viewfinder. It's times like this. I wish my son was here. Um, point seven forty five and a half. That's pretty close. It's just right there. This is a three-quarter reach spark plug. Now, I'm going to go in there again. You've seen the resistance I had at first. I will chase all these out. I did remove the um, um, gasket with it. Uh, the, the design of this head, it is a flat surface. This is the type of plug that's supposed to be in it. See how it's got the, the perfectly flat? with just a little bitty bit of a radius as it goes in. Well, that's exactly, I'll get you a close, a close up, a flat surface, and it's been chamfered. This is the type of plug that this head was designed for to go in on the receiving end. Let's go ahead and run it down. This is, um, you guys, this is the flaw in this head. I don't mean to sound broke up here, but I just know what I'm getting ready to get into here. I'm hoping that that gasket done. All right, now there I'm locked. There it is, flat, plugged in as far as it's going to go. All right, let me reset the camera. All right, apparently taking that gasket off dig the trick. Um, I don't like that. I like the little gasket being on the spark plug, but it's just enough. I mean, it still ain't protruding. What I've got to do is come in here with a marker, and I'm going to start right here and shade it in. i got to do this to every chamber okay 
and I'm gonna have to take and break a couple of spark plug phone call there. Anyway, now reason I mark it like this on all of them. So when I'm grinding, let me see if I can get you a better angle. Hold on. When I'm grinding, I've all I've got a little bit of the plug showing there, just a touch. So we don't want to touch that. That area in black will be untouched. Now this is uh, porting things that have been known for years. You take your Sharpie or back in the old days, Magic Marker, and that's there you don't cut. But now look down here. Okay, I can't mark it. I'm look at this area here. I've got about four threads throwing. Now while that's four threads showing. <laughs> Now, while that's not bad, I'm going to go in there and alleviate that right there a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy on it, but I'm going to take a, a smaller ball and chunk a little bit of that out and give it a little bit of roll so that way we got a clean ignite and a burn. It's called chemical burn in its first stages. There's two burns, chemical and mechanical. And it's in the chemical going to the mechanical burn that we want this unshrouded. Think of it in a way as what we're doing to the combustion chamber in a hole. How I'm unshrouding uh, the valve to let more air and fuel in. I'm going to be actually unshrouding the spark plug. But boy, that just gave me goosebumps when I saw that with that gasket. I about throw the fit because the two ten of uh, the two o fives. I haven't had a set of them yet that's come through here that the things without the gasket set like they're supposed to that I didn't have to cut a quarter inch a meter more. Now on the 190s I have had a couple of them that that top was down two threads. That's not too bad. It's still a lot of time chopping that and blending it but I would seriously suggest that any of you guys take and whenever you get them uh, be careful when you're threading them because sometimes they that you need to run the threaders through the spark plugs to make sure that they're clean but that you run them through and at least have something like this just a touch of the metal plug showing if you've got that it's okay it still needs to be cut in this area and unshrouded to let it burn properly but if it's sunk down in there a thread or two something's got to be done um, you're going to have to have somebody that ports heads that knows what they're doing go in here because there is a water jacket that circulates around that plug. So you can't go in there just willy-nilly chopping away and it has to be that this is developed into the swirl right here and, and bleed off into it. So that is going to be a must because that's just going to kill you on flame travel and ignition if you've got that shrouded up and not covered. So anyway, let's get on back to what we're doing. I just wanted to verify that with a spark plug before I started. All right. Now that we know where the spark plug's at, which you had to do first because you can see where I marked it, I'm going to go in here and lay waste to this chamber. Right here is the heavy area modification. And right over here and then right here. Let's see what we can do to this thing. Notice how I kept digging down in here. Now it's leaving a ridge. I'm going to have to go back with this piece and pull that ridge in later. But now I'm going to bring up to here and try to open this scoop up. Boy, this big butcher hog, it sure saves a lot of time. If I had to depend on them little birds, this job would be a nightmare right now. started to almost get in that black and then I stopped. And 
Now I've opened this area here up, letting it breathe. It's got a lot more dramatic whoosh, swirl swoop, as we call it. All right, now we're going to attack the exhaust side. This has got a lot to come out. Watch this. shut off look at the difference now you can just tell uh, where I laid that back I'm giving me a great exit path this is going to make about 8 to 10 CFM uh, I'm being modest here more like 10 to 12 at the 3 4 and especially in the 5 and 600 lift range I mean it's really releasing the air compared to this side over here notice how I kept it I think I can get you a straight over shot in a sec. You can see how there's black all the way around. I did not go in there and fool with that because I especially didn't want to touch it in an area that would relieve more or show more of the spark plug. Also, I didn't go in there grinding. There's still the noticeable hump. It's just a little bit more leveled out for this shot right here. And over here, there's a hump because I'm telling you, there is water that surrounds it and you don't want to fool with that. You want the bulk of that meat right there to support the plug, keep water, dissipate the heat. We're just going to unshroud it. Now let's take a look on the top. Oh, look how much, man, I mean you can just tell how much more right here when you compare. Now we're getting a little bit better at it. Now when we try to compare how much more area here versus here, look at that straight line across if you followed it see it'd be like up in here layering that pulling that down moving that out of the way is going to let the exhaust i forgot to show you the intake side up close sorry about that guys okay now let's go in a little bit we can see where i mean you can just tell on the film i can anyway but up close and personal you would have a cow if you saw this right here you go wow that is a major shape change difference I mean, just looking at it there, you can see how much moved there, then here, how I pulled that in, the swoop down right here, alleviating it for the plug, how much better it is. That's the shape I wanted to do. It just took a lot of time, and I know it's just a 350, but it's going to be a 383. I guess that made me... That's what the decision, that was the deal breaker. If he was putting this back on a 350, I don't know if I would have went and done this. But being on a 383, which he's going to build a motor, that was the determining decision. He needed the full stage 4 uh, chamber reshape. It's not going to lose many cc's, but the benefits are unreal. You can see easily now how this would add up to a 30 CFM gain. Now for the final part, leveling this hump and bringing that right there down this is the tricky part that you really got to watch and go slow on